Hello, good morning. Thank you for joining us today for this uh, early session for the summer camp, Learn to Code Summer Camp 2021. This uh, because of uh, so Kevin, Dr. Kevin Bond is located in South Africa, right? No, no you're in UK. No, UK. <laughs> UK. That's right. <laughs> that's that's the I, other team. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so because of scheduling, uh, this was the table. So we're going to do a Q&A now for his videos. So hopefully you had a chance to view the playlist, which I'll go ahead and put the playlist again in the chat window here. And um, if not, we can create some of the videos now. So why don't you tell us real quick about your um, the book? Because I guess you've written a series of books, right? Yes, I, I'm, I started this Delphi book. Um, about eight nine years ago and, and and then other books got in the way um i i've been associated with an examining board in the uk for a very long time as uh chair of examiners and um the the the, the government um listened to us um and uh changed um the structure of the ict curriculum to involve more computer science um, uh -huh. And that kicked into the courses um, that I've been responsible for for a number of years. So they needed restructuring, to cut a long story short. Um, and there's been a big sea change across the whole world in terms of what is taught in schools, um, shifting away from um, the Microsoft Office approach, uh, ICT applications and so on. Um, towards computer science um, so we had to create a, a syllabus very very quickly and then we needed textbooks so the Delphi um, textbook was was parked so that I could write um, two books that targeted the upper end of um, the uh, structure in this is in the UK um, the examination series that I've been responsible for are um, preparation exams for university entrance. So the main one is A-level, but there's a subsidiary one called OIS. So that was the third book. And then it rippled down into the next level, the 14 to 16 age group. Right. The previous one was 16 to 18. Um, and that is called, the qualification is called G GCSE. So that was changed as well. So um, I, by the time I came back online to writing the textbook, um, Embarcadero had moved through several versions of Delphi. But the beautiful thing is, it made not one iota of difference in, the, in, in terms of the core, because that hasn't changed. Um, right. So I, I've talked uh, Delphi 7 for years, but going back a long while, um, I taught Delphi 1, before that, Ball and Pascal with objects before that Turbo Pascal, before that Prospero Pascal, which is an ISO standard Pascal. And though I've, I've dabbled in other languages as well, I keep coming back to Delphi because for teaching purposes, 16 to 18 year olds, certainly, they get a handle on it very, very quickly. Um, right. A lot of schools in the UK now are teaching C sharp, um, basically because universities shifted to C sharp. So uh -huh. when schools are looking for the supply of teachers to teach computer science, the graduates coming out of university um, have been trained on C, C, uh, C sharp. But one of the problems that uh, teachers have with C sharp is um, the boilerplate that goes around the very first um, you know, lesson you have. You can't avoid the, the approach in C sharp is, is you create objects straight from, from scratch. You do have a console mode. So if you want to teach a concept, you have to come out of C sharp um, and, and into the console mode. Well, you don't have to do that in Delphi. You, you, you know, you start with Delphi console mode. Well, you don't have to. Um, uh -huh. And that grows into the VCL applications. But you've always got the console there in the background. Um, and in fact, the, 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 um, the textbook now is current with Delphi 10.4.2. 10, 10 uh, but it, it's never been a problem, never been an issue. It's, it's current all the way through. So uh, and and, and I, long, a long time ago, I, I favoured ISO Pascal so that what my students learnt was portable. But the next yeah. best thing is Delphi because um, that doesn't change. So, so they have a portable skill, not one that was, 
you know, ne this is OK this year. Next year is out of date. That doesn't work. That, this doesn't work like in Python, going Python 2, Python 3, etc. And the v various versions of VB, etc. Um, one of the dreads of, 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 of teachers in, in schools is having to rewrite their notes because you only have a tiny window uh, right. <laughs> every year. I, mean, yeah, I, I can remember my supervisor because I did a PhD in physics a long time. My supervisor. Um, I used to go and knock on his office door from about ooh, what June onwards and all the way through up to October. He was rewriting notes, you know, that huge window and luxury okay, uh, that teachers don't have. And you've always got some new initiative getting in the way as well. So please don't don't change the language, but make it up to date. But don't change your core notes. That's so, so what I meant to say. So anyway, yeah. so I resumed and I uh, the the with with the. Um, a-level books, that, that's the 16 to 18 qualification and the GCSE books. Um, mm -hmm. you, have a, you have a syllabus, so you have a structure to that. So you just map it into the, uh, the book structure in terms of chapter headings, etc. cetera. Um, with Delphi, I wasn't quite sure where I was going to go with this. I had a lot of notes from, uh, from Delphi 7, et cetera. So, um, I mean, I, I, the A-level the, the book was just starting at the beginning, working the way through. With the Delphi book, I started at the end and worked backwards in a sense, uh, because you you know you 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 take you 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 choose to do the low hanging fruit first of all, um, and and I I choose Arduino simply because I was working on Arduino at the at, at the time, and I wondered well how many chapters will come before that chapter? So that was chapter eighty, and then working back, you certainly find I've got seventy nine chapters to write. So um, you, you know when you release an early access version. It, it's based tablets of stone. You you can't change it now. I I would if I was starting it, I'd split the book into two because it's over a thousand pages long. But um, you know, w w w first of all, I've always tried to target the teachers first. The teachers know how best to navigate through a book and and, and construct their lesson uh, plans. But the focus on A level uh, uh, computer science um, in the UK is theory and a lot of practical and a project. So I put things in there and that have made many more chapters to target projects. But students don't do the same thing for projects. They don't, they don't just concentrate on uh, a VCL. They might do a web based activity. They might do a database or whatever. There's a lot on databases um, because that was something that appealed to the full gamut of ability, the full range of ability. Um, the, the top end would would do clever stuff with networking. And I can remember w one um, student was into um, Jim Carner's po pony um, uh, um, events and etc. So he actually set up an, um, a system, wi a, a Wi-Fi driven system, where out in the in the, the uh, in the competition rings you would have laptops, but back at base you would have a desktop application, and so the the uh, event results were being sent over Wi-Fi. To a Delphi application um, back in back in the, the the main office, and that was a student A level project. Um, another one I had um, was a simulated horse race betting uh, system that um, used to be run on charity evenings, and and so you had very uh, various uh, uh, channels again connected by Wi-Fi and a server and and so on. And that was all done with Delphi Seven. Now that that was the sort know, of thing. Yeah, sorry, I'm I'm, I'm rabbiting on. You must stop me. Look, when, when it's too much. Actually, that reminds me of a really interesting story I completely forgot about. Way back when I was um, in high school, middle school type, yep. you know, age, the um, I was I had so I started I started out programming in batch files in MS DOS, mm. and later learned BASIC, and then later learned Turbo Pascal, and have since done a lot of other languages as well. But mm -hmm. like you, I keep going back to to Delphi, but. I remember back early on doing Toro Pascal, and there was a, uh, I was running a, I ran a computer bulletin board system. I wrote a lot of software for that, and I was kind of connected through the BBS um, community. And one of the guys that kind of mentored me a little bit, I don't know if I ever actually met him. <laughs> I probably did meet him, but most all I think my interactions were over the BBS. He built software with Toro Pascal for handicapping horse races. <laughs> <laughs> right. So when you mentioned that, is I just awesome. remember all the way back in the day. Yeah, yeah. But your comments though about how you've been writing this book for so many years, it still yes. works. The the course still works. Reminds me of uh, I mean, I, that, 
reinforces one of the things I love about Delphi, though, is the it's always innovating. Like I said, there's new versions coming out all the time, but it's so committed to that backwards compatibility. Now, it's not always perfect, but yep. Yep. so often you can take code and very easily migrate it where that's not always the case in other languages. Now, and you mentioned that with uh, Delphi, you have that uh, ability to do console applications where C sharp, you have to kind of, it starts an object oriented import group back. And that's because Delphi is the kind of the multi paradigm. It's got yep. Yep. functional programming, object oriented, and you can really yep. go anywhere from that. Is that, yep. is that, that's kind of what you're getting at with that? Yeah, that, that's right. I, um, I think around about two th version 2017 of C sharp, they brought out a replic. Um, uh, you know, read, evaluate, um, uh, blah, 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 whatever, um, and 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 so that has uh, become used, but not a lot. Lot of people know about that, but it all seems to to me that things are added on to support teaching, whereas it's always been core in in Delphi. So so the lessons, the video lessons I did for for YouTube, I I, I did very 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 quickly. Um, actually in response to a customer who bought the book and trying to get their head around object-oriented programming. Um, and I thought, well, okay, I'll, I'll do something very, very, very quickly because, um, you know, he's very, very enthusiastic, um, wants to, to crack it because he, he's okay with structured um, programming. Um, but the mm -hmm. approach that I adopted was exactly the same I've used. I mean, I've been retired for 11 years, but um, uh, from teaching um, when I, I, I was teaching Be because, um, it's fine when we were back in the old DOS days when we were using Turbo Pascal or Prosper Pascal and which we uh, Prosper we had to write our own mouse libraries but uh, uh, excellent graphics and 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 so on. As soon as it switched to to, to, to uh, Visual Basic with a with a um, you know a, a, a form based uh, approach, a lot of students were treating this uh, as a kind of sweet shop. Put one of those, two of those, three of those, four of those onto the form, double click, and we've got an application. Um, which, which is fine if, if you're a developer, that's what you want. You want to be highly productive. Yeah. But if you're a student, um, me, my role is, 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 is to guide, lead, et cetera. But there's got to be an explanatory purpose about the, the, the task of a teacher. Um, otherwise, a student could just, you know, do these things off their own back in their own time and so on, but not necessarily do them. Uh, re really well. So, so I've always broken things down. Now, now it's it, I want, it's, it, it's 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 not the case of one size fits all. So I I, I do lots of of, of approaches, um, and 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 you know one of them, two of them, three of them, or all of them will work depending on the student or whatever. So the consumer mode is where we start because you uh, even if you're doing event driven programming etc., you still need to know about variables. You still need to know about loops. You still need to know about selection procedures functions and so on so that's a good easy place to start and you can do some algorithms where so you can get students think um, and there's a, a modern approach called um prim uh, which is uh, um uh, it, it's i'm not sure where, it, where it's originated from but glasgow university were promoting it and our king's college here in um in uh, the the uk um and a lot of schools have adopted this approach i mean it's it's about uh predict given a, a, a program predict how it's going to behave, investigate, um, evaluate, et, et, et cetera. Uh, and, and, and once the penny is dropped, the last M, the two M's at the end of it, the last M is make your own based on that that um, particular um, design. So that fits nicely into, nice, nicely into a, a console mode approach. Um, and, and then, well, what's this magic about forms? Well, in actual fact, you can create a form from console mode so so then you get into explaining why you need um, application.create form application.run the message loop etc but there's no magic about it okay and and and, and there, there are there are two key things i think that students struggle with you create a class but the methods that they use are actually object methods not not class in, in the sense that you need an object reference to be able to use a method or to access the the, the fields or properties of an object. Um, so so that was in another video to, to bring across this idea that something goes into memory, which you have you have to, the constructor grabs memory, um, and that is going to record the state of this specific object. To access it, you need a reference to it. Whereas to make that object space. You use a, um, a a class method called well a special one called a constructor, but there are other 
class methods, which aren't that aren't special in, in the sense of constructor. And students don't get that subtlety. Um, and they may, maybe it's be, because I'm a, you know, originally a physicist, and I, you know, I like to almost go down to the individual electrons, if you like, to understand how it. I mean, you're not going to get very far if you keep doing that all the time. But there's got to be a, 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 basically a scaffolding to get you to, to accept things. And then if something goes wrong, it's not a, oh, try this, suck it and see, try this, change this, that. You actually have a methodological way you can examine what happens. And the other thing is the fact the object state is saved in a, in a, a text file called a DFM. Not a lot of people know that. Um, and, and so that's you can actually... Um, edit that directly if you want. It's not not recommended, but uh, one of the lessons basically takes. I do that all the time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm really. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so I've got. Yeah. Uh, you need to you need to keep a lot of balls in the air when you're doing that. But anyway, uh, so so you you um I've shown it. You take a form which which could have been written in any text editor, and as long as you set it up so that so Delphi when it launches can read it. You've actually got something on the on the components on the, the form and and so on. Um, and then I show the the uh, the message loop, um, and I I drill down to the individual micros, some of the micros, and I, I noticed that in copy and paste I made an error in the in the uh, the, 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 the 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 string that's outputted or whatever. It, it, I mean it's indirectly it's uh, it's okay, but um, but but so it's getting that understanding, and maybe it, it, the penny doesn't drop initially. Then we go on to do um, uh, application development, VCR forms, and, and so on. Um, but at some stage, I think that information is used. So I, I could point it out to my students. It's going wrong because this has happened, etc. So, so, and and not a lot of people know that although the the object encapsulates behaviour and 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 state. The the way Delphi has done it, it's not the way that Smalltalk did it, but the way that Delphi does it. That method code is shared amongst the objects. So there's one copy of it um, uh, in, in memory when the program is running. Um, and, and, uh, so, and, and then you, that later on links into virtual methods, the, the virtual method table and so on. Um, but, but you don't need to go down to that level of detail. But I had some very bright students. Uh, I taught for 31 years at a state grammar school. Um, and it was super selective. And so I, I felt the need to try and deliver at a fairly high level because some of my students already could, could do the VCL stuff. They'd come from uh, Visual Basic or whatever. Um, and I always saw it as uh, adding value. Um, and, and certainly going back to structured programming, how to structure program properly, and then coming on to object origin programming, how to uh, structure an object origin programming, etc. Um, I, I've just been looking at um, the 2D game uh, videos that are up on the Embarcadero site. Yes, um, yes. And, and, and trying to tease apart uh, just the, 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 the structure so I could actually write something about it in, in the book. Um, and I mean, the, the, the Space Invaders one is, I printed it out, it's about 40 pages long. Um, and it's devilishly difficult to understand. <laughs> so I was scratching my head for for five days, but I cracked it. Okay. Um, uh, okay. And what I, I want to, well, I think I have. What what I want to do is, uh, I, I mean, certainly put into the uh, the game loop uh, just about five procedure course because uh, everything seems to be in that message loop. So it's yes. just, so well, you try to understand that. So, um, so, so I, I, that's what I'm going to do. This is the chapter I'm working on at the moment, and and I've got a deadline at the end of um, August. I I drafted uh, uh, chapters for the for the for the mailing stuff, but uh, it's not pulling it all together. Um, well, okay, I I've been at this what about eight years, but I uh, say diverted by other things, etc. Um, but it's been a labour of love. I mean, I just love programming in Delphi. I programmed in BCPL. I programmed in C Sharp. I programmed in uh, VB.net. Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, and uh, Prologue. Prologue I like. <laughs> I programmed in Haskell. Haskell I like. Because uh, um, it's a different, two different uh, uh, programming, uh, uh, programming paradigms. In fact, students loved Prologue 
because it was sorted at a level um, of those that were sort of mathematically inclined. You didn't have to write too much code. You could see how to traverse a, a tree. Um, and it's just one statement, basically, but it's done recursively. So, um, yeah, but, but you've got, you know, if you want to produce something that you ship out the door that does a lots, lots of things, then you need to produce a VCL application or a FireMonkey application or a mobile application. So the book also goes into um, FireMonkey uh, mobile applications, which um, my demos I wrote some time ago. I've got to look at them again. Um, but, but you don't have to just stick with that. You can lie it with, with Python, um, for instance, which I did the chat. Um, I, I think they've actually, um, the, the people that have produced the library have changed something because uh, uh, two or three of the programs need looking at again on, on, on my site to see to, to tw tweak them to get them to work again but um and i you know delved in in the book into how to create packages uh because i've installed glc i mean i i uh i, I do the firemonkey 3d but i also do glc as well um i i think firemonkey is based on was it dx scene and then uh, uh gl scene is is a sort of parallel uh equivalent um but it, it's it's still being um developed for um it, there's a version now for 10.4 but you need to understand packages to install it so i've included the uh, package dlls to make um a uh web-based um uh, uh oh no actually mobile phone i think about it where you can access a database which is web-based but it's it's based on DLLs on the Apache server and so on. So it's, there's so much in Delphi that you could leverage to do stuff, um, and and that is what I call advanced stuff. So the first 600 pages are what I call the core to teach programming in Pascal, stroke object Pascal, um, uh, composition aggregation, um, program to interfaces, etc. Which are it's absolutely right. It's key. Um, if I was mm -hmm. still in school teaching. I would teach to interfaces. Um, we, 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 uh, we used to teach abstract classes and so on, and, and, and students got it actually. Um, but, and then the other 600 is for project work. So as I say, I, I, I delve into um, mobile networking, um, encryption, bit, uh, Bitcoin. Uh, I, I um, look at the, uh, the, the web-based stuff. I've used uh, TMS software. I've got a, an application that um, I, 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 I use MySQL, but I don't need to. I could have just put a f file up and parsed the file. Um, I, I have a, grand, uh, a granddaughter who lives in, in Sydney in Australia, and she's just started school. And there, there are about uh, 2,000 schools in New South Wales. And she, when she comes up to choosing a secondary school, uh, or if they move from Sydney to some other district, they, they want to know where the schools are. So uh, I, I, I just did a, a TMS um, mobile phone app that, uh, that's got all the little red flags where all the schools are. And then uh, you, you can drill down and get more detail about the schools. I thought that's, that's a lovely school, uh, a 70 year olds project, yeah. uh, et cetera. And you can do it in Delphi. Uh, you, you know, you don't need to come out and do some uh, JavaScript stuff where you really got to watch out when you're debugging and it. it's still got some funnies in it that can can throw you, etc. So stick with with what you know, solid coding, lovely language. It goes back years, very, very stable. Um, and uh, you're on to a winner. So, so. Yeah, well, this is all great stuff. I, I find it really interesting, but I, I wanted to uh, I brought up your website here. Yeah. Um, and so if somebody is uh, a self learner and they want to come out here and take advantage of some of the stuff you've written. Uh, so we have these sample lessons here as well as the videos. Yeah. Uh, is there some place they should start or is there a book they should grab to, to well, get started it's, with? Or it's, I should really, really, I mean, I, uh, I'm not, <laughs> well, I am marketing the book, but, but I, I'm hand on my heart. That book starts from very uh, basic stuff, which has been tried and tested. Uh, in a school for 25 years or whatever, and that will take you through the various lessons. These lessons pull together a lot of stuff, um, but uh, they're, they're not sequential one-to-one co -one correspondence with chapters in the book. Um, I mean, I can uh, 
uh, bring up the um, book. There's a I, there's a beta version six of the early access. Um, the, I mean, I do this early access because I've done it with the other books, and it, it okay. It's not every chapter is fully reviewed. There are one or two funnies in chapters which haven't yet been reviewed, but largely I've only had one report of uh, well, two two erratums. Um, and I don't know whether you, you'd allow me to share my screen. Okay. I can let you bring share your screen here. Yeah. Okay. Um, so what I want. There you to go. You can share your screen now. Okay. So I'm ready to share my screen. So if I bring this, uh, uh, can everyone see the screen? Mm, not yeah. yet. Okay. Sorry, I'm not that there we familiar. Go. I see. No. Yep. I said, okay, right. Um, so this is um, version six beta, which will be the last one that I will um, issue. So the first place to start is to have a look at the contents. Um, so so it starts, uh, this is just a, a, a taster really. And it, uh, basically the says you can skip these two, um, starting programming. Um, so so it, this is the level, I, because there are so many pages in it, I, I've broken my cardinal rule when I was teaching, never have more than about 10 lines on a page. <laughs> but um, what the heck, you know, I, I've just packed it in uh, because I'm, I i don't think I can split it into two books at this late stage. So so th that's that's the first bit. And, and it's just as simple as that. So if you've never programmed at all, you've got hold of the community edition, the latest community edition. It, this takes you through in one chapter how to cover um, what you need to know to be equipped with the core to then move on to object already programming. So it's the fourth program gets on to multiple variables, um, et cetera, et cetera. And there are exercises, um, practical exercises, programming tasks with solutions. Um, and OK, so, so that really is the chapter if you're a real beginner um, to get going. Um, and, and then it, the, 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 the next chapter, ah, this has got in the way a little bit, so I'm just moving out of there. The next uh, chapter goes on to, um, uh, let's go back to the index. Uh, I should have put a bookmark on this. Um, so, uh, okay. Um, Programming constructs, that's for loops, if then else, um, different data types, arithmetic operations, pointers and dynamic memory, um, which carry a health warning because they can be dangerous. But I, when we're talking about references, that, though, most books won't cover that anymore. So, no, I know, but it's still there, available in, in Delphi. So, you that's, can. That's one of the things I love about Delphi, though. Uh, sorry, just to, yeah. is that this, that you can work. You don't have to go down and work with pointers and dynamic memory. No, nope. nope. you can. Yeah. You know, and yep. so you you can program whatever level you're most comfortable with. Yeah, and if if as a student you're struggling with the concept of memory, memory addresses, etc., this is a um, one way it can be tackled, but it, not not necessarily say it's successful 100% of the time. And then later on, when you're talking about object references and you talk about memory addresses. Um, there's 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 a, a, a an anchor there to refer to. Um, I, I do the rational operations, Boolean operations, exception handling, um, and then I do regular expressions, uh, which uh, I say this is a beta version. So oh golly, it's not the links um, have not been set up correctly. Um, regular expressions, which if I go to page one eight six, um, so one eight six. If I, um, and I think this this is a a, a very uh, powerful uh, tool to to do regular expressions, and so um, I, I cover a little bit of theory first, um, but but uh, then we we and, and some exercises, and then we have an example. So I, I I do include lots of example code which can be downloaded. So you, a, a teacher could adopt this prim approach where you take out some of these things um, and you ask the students at the whole class, what do you think will happen next? What will be the outcome of this program? Um, 
the the idea is that they will have been prepped with a homework that the before the lesson so they've done some reading of that theory etc and we then discuss what all the students predict in, in uh, I'm not suggesting infant school level where you have a whiteboard um, and uh, <laughs> all the students write, what, each student writes what they think the answer should be and holds it up, etc. Um, well, that's, that's quite a good technique. Uh, and, and, and then when there's a consensus, um, you can then add a bit more um, and uh, uh, the, the, the prediction skill hopefully will be better. And then you can make, you can make another um, uh, uh, exercise which is based on on this etc so uh and and this is the, the the approach throughout uh so uh getting across this is probably a couple of lessons uh um if, if you were teaching in school uh if if you're just somebody who's doing it as a hobby um maybe a couple of e evenings work or something like that um okay so um i'll go back to the um uh, the index. Uh, stop me when uh, you've, uh, I'm, I, you've you've uh, had enough. <laughs> uh, One more question, actually. Yeah. Um, can, actually, can you zoom in the PDF a little bit because it's some people are saying it's a little hard to read. See. Uh, yeah, certainly. Yeah, definitely. Like, Another um, question I have. So it looks like is there multiple books on your site? Is it which? If so, which book is this? This is the How to Program Effectively in Delphi. Okay. All right. Or, That's what I thought. ASA level computer science. The other books are course books um, for the A level, the AS level, the GCSE level. That, that's the 16 to 18 qualification that uh, is used as uh, entrance to universities. And the GCSE is the 14, 16, which is used uh, as preparation for the uh, six form A level uh, course, the 16 to 18 course. Okay, yep. Um, so. I missed the introduction there. Uh, yeah, I should have been a bit more astute and checked these that, that I could bookmark this and go back, but um, what the hell? Um, okay. Um, so uh, then we introduced subroutines, single multi dimensional arrays, um, dynamic arrays. Uh, I covered structured programming because I still think it's um, a useful um, skill. But yeah. uh, ch chapter nine, you know, meaningful identifier names, uh, layout, uh, indentation, um, a, a, a procedure, function, subroutine should do one one task, um, etc. Um, introducing object-oriented programming, and I go through object references, encapsulation, inheritance, polymorphism, aggregation, uh, design principles, um, uh, class object diagrams. Uh, creating the on-screen form of console mode is, is a subject to one of the lessons. Um, I do streams, network programming, encryption, hashing, Bitcoin, generics, vectors and matrices, uh, a little bit advanced, but um, there are some maths A-level courses here in the UK that do cover matrices. So there will be some students that um, are au fait with matrices. Um, graphics, sound applications, uh, VCL components, FireMonkey components, debugging, anonymous methods, um, and this is where I, I bring in functional programming paradigm. Um, the an introduction to OpenGL. Um, uh, the, the, the more OpenGL has been written, but not uh, to the st standard yet to be included. I'm going to cover a little bit of the Castle Game Engine, but it's still not um, compatible with Delphi. I think there are a couple of programs that it works with, um, yeah. but but I, I will reference it because it, I think it's uh, watch this space. Um, I do o OLE uh, because I've had students in the past that have um, needed to access spreadsheets and Word documents and so on. I do get unit testing, installing packages, um, I do using the IDE more effectively, that's using the shortcuts, which I have mentioned in the lessons. Um, introduction to databases, creating, executing SQL statements at runtime. Um, 
SQL ADO query. I, 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 my dilemma is that I am aware that there are still some schools that are, are have access to Delphi 7 and haven't upgraded for whatever reason. It might be because the head of department is um, new and has started with C, teaching C sharp, but um, how are you going to change that? Uh, well, it's possible that there will still be a Delphi 7 running on their network. Um, you can still use you can use ADO query with Delphi 10.4.2, but um, so I, I have kept that in. I um, have introduced Interbase. I cover Interbase, and I go through um, how to go the the um, on disk structure. It changes between one version of Interbase and another, and I go into I explain that a little bit. So what you've got to do to um, update to to a newer version of Interbase. Because um, I know that used to fox some teachers. Um, case tools for designing databases. I, I, that's a, a, sh a very powerful tool to be able to draw an entity relation diagram, press a button uh, to get a script, uh, and then um, run the script in Interbase to uh, generate all the tables. My students used to be doing this all the time. And of course, if they didn't get it right, they could just go back, change the diagram. <laughs> they didn't used to do this very often because I used to encourage them to think very carefully about constructing something that would work. Um, and, and then run the, the script generation process again and, and then regenerate the, the, the tables. Um, there are still a couple of tools which are free, which will generate uh, scripts for SQL scripts for or, or uh, DDL scripts for Interbase, um, but you, th th they will also generate MySQL, etc. Um, I will just include a reference to a database project, which will probably be a download. Um, I used to use Quick Reports, but Fast Reports is current, so I will do something on that. Um, I have done the MySQL databases, but in another chapter. Um, then, of course, I cover working with FireDAC, which is current. I think I would recommend using FireDAC. Um, but you obviously can't do that if you're working with Delphi Delphi 7. Um, I will do the, the low base um, coding um, uh, because that has a nice um, example for mobile phones because um, it's quite a little bit tricky to, to get the database set up on a mobile phone. Um, the rest programming, I've got quite a lot done on that um, already because that is part of the A-level. Uh, syllabus that, that I used to be responsible for. I cover TMS uh, software components, web server. Um, I will use um, um, the uh, tools, MITOF tools for machine learning, just a simple right. introduction. Um, and in the advanced graphics, I do uh, graph the sigmoid um, function, the S function, which is uh, one of the functions which is used in machine learning. So there will be uh, some exposure to that. Creating your own components, I've done. Uh, incorporating assembly. One of the nice things about Delphi is that you can write assembly language in line. You don't have to do anything clever as you have to do with C sharp, with loading DLLs, configurations, um, uh, uh, frameworks, etc. You just drop in, if you've got a variable X, you just drop in ASM, N, put between that uh, three assembly language statements, um, and you can access that, the, the value of that uh, high level variable X, change it, and then export it back so that you can write it out in the high, in the high level statement after the ASM N block. Um, I, I, I have done something with Delphi and Arduino. And I've covered serial data communication because um, if you don't understand how to, uh, uh, well, what goes on under, under the hood between a Delphi program and the Arduino, you're actually over serial communicate data community, you're actually sending the code that will run in the Arduino because the Arduino is a microcontroller board, so you have to upload the program. Um, Smart Mobile Studio, um, there, there's something there's something called Quartex Pascal which John Assenden is working on, and it's not quite finished. And I may substitute 
Cortex Pascal for, for, for Smart Mobile Studio. But that enables you to generate JavaScript from, from, a, from, from a, a Object Pascal, essentially. Um, There's also uh, TMS WebCore has that same yes. similar similar yep. technology yeah absolutely absolutely this is, um, this is a uh impressive <laughs> I, i'm looking at this and there's certain things like oh that's a great one to topic and then other ones i'm like i need to read that chapter <laughs> <laughs> well yeah uh it's been a labor of love this, this is why uh, this is why it's taken so long basically but um i i i've always been unsatisfied with publishing something early quickly to make the bucks i'm not in it to make the money I do it out of love because I work with Delphi in, in uh, school teaching for so long. And I don't right. want to, to just uh, see all that work that I did go to waste. And so what I've attempted to do is make it current, bring it up to date um, and you try and put down on paper my insight into uh, what I experienced as a teacher trying to convey concepts and how I not always I was not always successful with everyone but because you it not it, it's not a one size uh, uh, size of, uh, shoe fits everyone um, you, you know but there's enough there to take something try it if it works for you with your students great if it doesn't take something else uh, think about it uh, adapt it use it to to uh, to to to, to uh, uh, be successful um, right so so that is, in a nutshell, is the overview. Um, and I say you can download some there's of the- There's a question. Yeah, sorry. Okay. Yeah. Uh, there's one question here. Chuck's asking if he gets the early access version today, will yeah. there be a notification of the release version? And is that included in the purchase as well? That is included in the purchase price when the, when the next uh, version is released and then the final version, they will be sent out automatically. Um, so, so, so that you, you, uh, for, for today's price, 20 quid, you will end up eventually, hopefully the end of August, beginning of September, with the final published version in full PDF form, not early access form in full PDF form. Um, what, uh, look, I, I'm not gonna say the price will, will go up because that suggests that I'm trying to make clinch a sale today. But history is with my A-level books for uh, computer science, I, I pitched the price, what I felt was appropriate for an early access edition, kept that price all the way through. And those people that sign up early uh, got the final version without paying any extra. And then about a year after, I did push up the, um, the PDF price, basically. Um, but um, the, the, um, the, the today price, 20 quid, uh, is the, uh, no, no, no additional. It is the the final price, as it were. You'll get the full final version as well for that price today. So that's great. That is great. So. Um. Now, on uh, so uh, the order form you download, it looks like the order on the website. Well, no, the, uh, there's an e-commerce site. So if you if you click um, through, if you if um, uh, where am I? Bring up. Uh, if I bring up the website www.educational-computing, bookmark this site. I bet it's a good one. Okay. Okay. So um, <laughs> if, if you if you want a direct purchase, then you can go to the e-commerce site, and it, it payment is via PayPal um, essentially. Oh, there it is. Direct purchase. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Okay. So um, so if you click on that and you add it to the cart. Um, and you go to the checkout, uh, and then you check out securely. Um, and uh, it's basically done by download link. So the email address which is supplied here, I will use that to send a download link. And I will also, uh, you will also get um, all the code. Now, um, I've always used RAR, but somebody pointed out, do I have a, a zip version? Um, and um, it's, yeah, it's something I've got to do. I've got to change it to zip so on Windows 10 you don't need anything extra. But uh, WinRAR is a 40-day trial version, so you, um, it, I would say I'm not going to get around of changing these to dot zip until maybe September time. I, there aren't there aren't enough hours in the day, um, but 
Um, all the, the code is there um, for the examples um, all the way down right to the um, to the end. As I had said about the mod web broker project, um, et cetera. So chapter eight, chapter two. Um, for the programming exercises or solutions to questions, I've done most of the solutions, I think. Um, Someone was asking what the price was in US dollars. I just was going through to buy this right now as well. Uh, and it, uh, PayPal says it's 2870 US dollars. So you yep. should be something like that if you if you buy yes, in, yep, in US dollars through the, yep. Uh, yep. at least that's what PayPal's giving me, the conversion app. Yeah, yeah. Um, the uh, we when we the print version is uh, as I say should be available. Uh, I hope it will be the end of August. It'll certainly be September. Uh, we have print on demand facilities in the states, in Australia, and in the UK. Um, so um, the shipping will will be local to the US, local to Australia, local to the UK. Um, uh, I I haven't. I I also think that I am set up for South America as well and for India, but I need to check on that. Um, so so I uh, I'm actually use, I use Ingrams, which is an American company, um, yeah. and they're sub, subsidiary Lightning Source, and they are pretty pretty good. They are pretty good. They ship pretty quickly. Um, so so Google price yep. converts that to twenty seven sixty four. So it's going to depend on who does your currency conversion for yep. purchasing it, but. Yeah, yeah. I'm by, I'm by, I'm downloading my copy right now. <laughs> uh, so um, what have I done? I've 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 done some of the solutions to some of the problems. Um, I I've got to put up a few more, and um, that's the dictionary words uh, uh, one there. So they're, they're in Word, uh, Word to uh, uh, Word dot docx. Um, so um, yeah, so. Uh, that's um I, I'm sort of conscious that I probably talk too much, but I always do that. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was kinda we wanted to bring you on here and you answered the questions as they came in. So this is good. I'm actually I, like I said, I just bought a copy oh. and I don't know if I missed the download link or Ah, wait, wait, wait. it's semi automatic. <laughs> so it down, does it download it, automatically? Okay. No, it it it, it doesn't. Um the the uh, I I've got to put some coal into the steam engine and 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 then when it's got a head of steam up it, 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 leave leave it a couple of hours and you will get the download link. Uh, okay, so it's emailed to me then. Uh, it will be emailed to you, Jim. Yeah, okay, no. all right. Yeah, you have to, unfortunately it, there's a lot of automation in it, but um, one stage of putting the um, uh, license to on is still manual. It's one of those jobs that. Um, I've got to task somebody with. Um, yeah. Yeah. Actually, I can. I, I will look at. I might be able to do the conversion for RAR to ZIP if you are interested. I think I could probably automate it. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I'm saying so, so when, when if you if you bought. I mean, I will send you the uh, the, the link anyway. But um, it will come through as part of your pay, But it will. I'll, I'll do it independently as well. Um, okay. Yeah. That's a, that's a skill that I've I've not reached yet to be able to do that. So, <laughs> well, you know, it's one of those things that the um the amount of stuff out there to learn and to cover. I mean, this book is an amazing example of that. Just the the breadth of what you can do with Delphi. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, but there's it you, you just can't learn it all. I, I it's like I'm saying, you know, that I'm, you're going through this table of contents. I'm like, I need to read that chapter. That's something I've never got into before. But uh, I was working with a uh, developer a while back that he was a fairly young guy and was self-taught, taught himself Delphi. It was, yeah. it was interesting. He uh, comes into the office and just like, hey, I saw you guys use Delphi. Can I get an interview? And they're like, OK. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just it was very unexpected. And so they interviewed him they're like, oh, wow, this guy really knows his stuff. Um, yeah. He had, he had no exposure to databases at all. And so they had me kind of mentor him a little bit and help him with some things. And so right. I introduced the idea of uh, in-memory data sets and databases to him. Yes. And yes. he's like, this is amazing. Yeah. Everything he did from that point on, he had an in-memory data set in it. Right. <laughs> because it, it, it's such a 
a powerful way of working with things, yeah. that idea of a set of data and yeah. uh, use yeah. that a lot. So Yeah, because you it, can leave it so much. And that, that's something yeah. you just remind <laughs> That should go in another chapter, <laughs> whatever in our space, because I haven't covered that. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I, uh, uh, Alistair Christie, he does LearnDelphi.tv. Yeah, I, I've got his and his, his, his videos, yeah. Yes, yeah, yes. He's an excellent yeah. guy. <laughs> he did some videos. Of, was it? He made he did a video on how to make a component for Delphi. Ah, and that's what like, oh, I haven't got to yet. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, why didn't you use the component wizard? And he's like, I forgot that was thing. <laughs> yes. So he went back and did it again. He's the component wizard. Yeah, but. that's a, yeah that's something I I should do as well because uh, well you didn't have that with Delphi Seven. <laughs> I, I've tried I've tried to make this book usable um, mm -hmm. right there across from Delphi Seven up to ten point four point two, and then it will be Delphi Eleven. But obviously the mobile stuff you won't reach back as far as Delphi Seven. But I, I I've tried to retain backward compatibility certainly for core stuff um so um you you uh certainly can make uh components in in delphi 7 the way i've done it but yeah I, yeah if i was a developer yes <laughs> i would reinvent the wheel but as i say it's trying to be explanatory to people who um well some people will accept these things with on on uh, fate uh, uh as a given but um, there, I know there are some people that, well, what's actually happening under the hood? Because one of these days I might get stuck and I need to know. That's bizarre. Well, I, used to, I, know. Yeah. I used to work. So I, a little background about me, myself. I am 90% self-taught. When I, I was in uh, high school, I took a, uh, a computer science, AP computer science, which was a uh, college prep or college credit class. Yeah. And most everything that was in there, I already knew. And then after high school, I actually just went off on my own. I, I took a couple of night school classes from college, but never actually yeah. went and got a degree. And since yeah. then, I've talked to uh, people that have gotten CS degrees and realized there's a lot of stuff I missed in the theoretical yes. side. Yeah. But yeah. Um, Complex, complexity of arguments. So. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And uh, but where was I going? Sorry, I interrupted. No, it's fine. I just completely spaced where I was. Yeah, from high school and then after high school, you get a couple of night school classes and then. Uh, but you, what yeah, were, what I'm, were so you sorry. saying right before? What were you saying right before I, I started commenting? Um, it, I, I said it was under under, under the hood, Dan. Uh, oh, yes, uh, yes. Okay. Yep. Yeah, yeah. That's what it was. So I had a job um, kind of actually the place where I made transition from hobbyist programmer to professional programmer. Yes. I was working for a, a computer company that's now to have gone out of business called Micron Computer or Micron PC. And okay. they were a subsidiary of Micron Technology, which is based right. in Idaho where I live. And yep. they're the, Micron Technology is one of the largest memory chip manufacturers in the world. And they had a subsidiary that did PCs. Yep. Um, and they, they've gone out of business. But I was working there and I was I started in tech support and then got into engineering programming when I was in the engineering uh, department yep. when I was doing programming stuff there. Yep. Yep. And which interestingly for years, the software that shipped with Micron PCs was written in Delphi by me. The software you'd right. put in the disc that would install your drivers for you. Yes. I wrote yes. that. But anyway, the engineering department did start doing this early morning class where the uh, vice president of engineering or whoever it was, very high up guy would yep. explain engineering concepts yep right. and um which was it was really interesting for me because i had this notion in my mind that people at the high level you know the the suits or whatever you want to call them didn't know the technology right they were just business people but he's up there on the a bo on the whiteboard explaining how memory works <laughs> and i had never understood i knew i mean i knew some of it i knew that memory worked but i didn't know how it worked and he explained yeah. how you know you built up from the transistors the and gates and the or gates yes. and stuff yes. like that in yeah. the memory and it diagrammed it out and showed how memory worked i was like oh my goodness that's amazing now it's not something i need to use no. No. on a daily basis but having yeah. that understanding of that fundamental yeah. is it, yeah. really great and i think that when you can understand the layers of abstraction at different layers, then yep. it gives you the ability that when you're working at this layer here, right, this yep. high level, and yep. something's not quite right, then you can be like, oh, 
I understand why that's not quite right because I also understand what's happening down below, which I don't usually need to mess with, but it's great yeah, stuff. Yeah. No, well, yeah, I, I, I absolutely. I mean, I uh, when I um, first started uh, programming, it was Fortran. The, the 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 only thing that I did before university was to play around with matchsticks um, in an after school club to, to represent binary and do binary addition because we had no computer. I'm, I'm that old. Um, and then when I started at university, we we were programming in Fortran with punch cards, uh, chess games, um, and you didn't have any interaction with the computer at all because it was a batch um, pro processing system. I think it was ICL or something like that. And you just handed in your your card of decks um, to to an operator, and 24 hours later you got a printout saying there was a syntax error on line one or whatever so so you bit you ripped up the card and and or, or you, you um the origin of of um the delete key being 127 in ascii is because that would punch all the holes basically so the card would be yeah. would be ignored um and of course fortran then wasn't free format so i i went to work for a defense company um as a research scientist because I, I really was still a physicist then uh future techniques but um, I encountered a, a, a guy from, uh, he had a PhD from Cambridge University, who was an electrical engineer actually, um, but he had a PhD in graphics from, from um, Cambridge University. And Martin Richards at the time, were, who, 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 who um, uh, designed BCPL, the forerunner to C, binary coded parrot language, it was para, para, uh, uh, unkindly uh, referred to, paraphrasing. Um, and uh, he, he he had a an idea for um, writing an operating system, a portable operating system. It, it was for missile homing heads, basically. So that, that I, I can't go into too much detail. But um, so he said, would you would you want to come uh, join my my little group because we've got some uh, private venture capital, which was highly unusual for a defence company that was always spending government money but never its own money. Um, and, and 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 so that's how I learned BCPL, and it was a systems programming language. So I, I I really got to understand everything under the hood when you build up from the kernel and, and so on. Um, and my first encounter, I went to work for Philips and I didn't like that. I didn't like application program. I, I veered too far away from physics. And my, my first love of physics, and anyway, I ended up in school teaching. And um, uh, the, the, um, the, the, uh, um, B, uh, the the PC had just come out. And I looked at the structure of, of the operating system. And for a long time, I couldn't go anywhere near it because um, I, I thought it was so far removed from the operating system that we had created that ran in a, a Perkin Elmer um, uh, uh, interdata 716, a mini computer with 64 kilobytes of memory. And we created a multi access, multi programming, multi task operating system because we, we could use overlays and it was clever. It was uh, BCPL. Um, and and it, it took me a long time to actually embrace um, uh, MS-DOS because I thought this, is, this isn't the way to do it or whatever. But, but uh, who am I to say? I'm my little humble school teacher, uh, uh, not on those, those echelons. But, but uh, to cut a long, long uh, story short, the nearest thing I came to something that I could, I could have really uh, uh, um, uh, 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 get get my head around was was Delphi because everyone was learning basic at the, at the time. But just to go back, one of the tasks that we tasked one of our programmers in the in the research group at this defense company was to create a a, a, a preprocessor for Fortran, uh, which would allow us to do free format. Now you you think if you couldn't do free format, if your variable had to be in column two every time otherwise the compiler would ignore it you would not make much progress but my first encounter at school was the george 3 operating system running a teletype with a connection to the um the county hall computer system I, an icl system I, uh, sadly icl are no longer um and and so so unfortunately it was basic but we did we did and then of course the pcs came in that revolutionized schools uh, uh computing and 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 uh, and so on um but um I'm still interested in memory technology because one of the problems that we were we were working on when I was doing my PhD was the switching ability of nickel oxide, and I picked up some papers recently um, where that particular switching ability um, is the basis of some new memory, um, which which we might see 
in our PCs maybe in the next five years or, or so because um, it's very very cunning clever uh, te technology and unfortunately we noticed the switching behavior but we, we we couldn't exploit it enough to be able to say this is was a line worth pursuing so hey, that's enough for me <laughs> Uh, actually, I so I, I share. Let me share my screen real quick. I was going to show this uh, meme I just came across, which you've probably seen before. The uh, astronaut looking at the Earth, saying, "Wait, it's all blank," and the person behind him with the gun says, "Always has been." I don't remember exactly the origin of this meme, but somebody took this for the abstractions and they layered it out. You know, Python, C, assembly, and I, I thought this was fabulous. I, and I love the. I just I, this one's perfect. I love it. So this goes back to the idea of uh, we talk about abstraction layers, and I think you know you could do you could do all this you know uh, in Del you know Delphi has the ability to do assembly, manual memory management, yep. so on and so yep. forth. All the way you can actually build Python modules with Delphi too. So yes, yes, yes. anyway, great stuff. Yep. Thank you so much, uh, Kevin, uh, Dr. Bond, for for doing this for no, the no, book. No, no, I no, like no, to no, download no, the copy myself. So. I'll be on to it as soon as we, we, we finish this uh, uh, webinar. <laughs> Great. Okay. Thank okay, you so yeah. much. And Cheers. I will see you around, I'm sure. Enjoy your holiday. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Bill. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye.